In this video, I'm going to be showing you how we ran our virtual slit lamp grand round, the technical setup behind everything we did on the day for the event that I hope you really enjoyed. And just to give you a bit of a background as to the work that goes on behind the scenes to ensure that our event ran as smoothly as possible. So the thing that you really want to know is how did we get the live image from the slit lamp on Zoom? We used the MicroRec slit lamp camera system in combination with an iPhone SE. This allowed an image which came from the Hargshrite BQ900 slit lamp via a beam splitter to the mobile phone. This image was then transferred via a cable to a laptop. I'm going to show you that later. Uh, and that image was shared via an app called Camo. That allowed us to share the live webcam image from the phone to Zoom. And Camo is a great app because it allows you to switch between various video feeds on the fly. You don't need to go into Zoom settings and you can change all your video inputs really, really easily. And I'm going to show you exactly how we did that and how that software works after. Now, when we saw the patients, they came in and they took a seat. We didn't go straight into examining them on the slit lamp, as we sometimes do in real life. We had a chat with them. You know, the, the five patients who came in had a really great story to tell us. And they came in, they sat down. We had a microphone on the table, which was also connected to the computer and via, via Zoom. And you know, they told us how they presented, what symptoms they'd had. And, and Mr. Ferris, who was hosting the event, you know, really you know, drilled down into those details, which were really interesting to hear. And so we had a different camera on a different phone, on a tripod, which you know, filmed a wide view of the clinic room, which you'll see on the video, which there's a link to uh, of the original recording in the des description below. Now, the final camera that we had was an iPad, which was also connected to the Camo app on the laptop, which we could hot swap between. And this iPad allowed us to just bring a camera really close to the patient's face for examinations for exophthalmometry and the pupillary reflexes, which was really invaluable because some of the patients did have positive signs. We're now going to show you how we use the app Camo to run our virtual slit lamp grand round. It's a really useful app which allows you to have multiple video input sources and change between these on the fly whilst you're broadcasting. So here we're selecting different input devices. You can see the image right now demonstrates the slit lamp and the room, but we have the option to change between the different types of lenses for using the zoom lens, the wide field lens, the resolution, the frame rate, and even the audio too. If you change between the different input devices, we can see the different view. Here, the device labeled Slits Phone is actually the MicroRec camera connected to the slit lamp. The Camo app offers a unique set of features which actually allows you to rotate the image. This is particularly useful for a slit lamp grand round because the image that comes out of the beam splitter and the camera system that we used is inverted. The Camo app allows you to invert the image and make sure that it's displayed in the correct orientation such that in Zoom, for the viewers, everything is view viewed correctly. Examining different parts of the eyes requires different levels of exposure and white balance to have the optimal image. For example, you need to increase the brightness and exposure for examining the cornea, whereas you know, a lower brightness and a lower exposure allows you to appreciate retinal details more clearly. I was able to change these settings and modify these settings on the fly whilst Mr. Ferris examined in real time. Here we have the iPad. This device was used to examine the patients and bring the iPad close to their face so that we could examine their pupil reflexes. There's also an option to add a watermark. This is the view through Zoom. And we can see that when we change the device in Zoom, it reflects straight away in Zoom without the need to change settings in Zoom, making it very easy to behave as a director. Now, the last thing to tell you is how to change your webcam settings in Zoom to integrate with Camo. All you need to do is go to Preferences, Video, and select from the drop-down box, Reincubate Camo. For the best quality image, make sure that HD is enabled, 
mirror my videos turned off, and touch up my appearance and adjust for low light are turned off. These settings are best controlled within the camo interface. So wherever you are joining us from the, the UK, we hope you have a, a great afternoon. And so hopefully a little bit for everyone and for those of you preparing for the uh, part two examination, uh, we'll have some uh, questions and chance for you to uh, pick your own brains uh, on a variety of different cases. So our first gentleman is an 88-year-old chap with uh, left-sided uh, ptosis. Thank you very much for giving up your time this That's afternoon right. to come along. Well, really, it was uh, light, sunlight and things like yeah. that. And uh, even uh, bright electric light. Can you remember the nature of the injury? What actually happened to the eye? Well, it was a, what shall we say, a heavy blow to my eye. Right. And uh, I lost the sight altogether mm. at one point. There mm. was a hemorrhage in the back of my eye, they told right. me. They couldn't tell me much more than that. <laughs> So you've had poor vision really ever ever since. Yeah. Just look right at the tip of my... Yeah. ...in there. So for those watching, you can see there's active degree of bilateral ptosis. You can see how the right lid certainly bisects the pupil and the left only just above the pupil. Uh, so things to look out for is to look at the height of the lid crease. Lid crease on both sides is elevated, more so on the right than the left and that's been measured in clinic as sort of 10 and 8 millimetres by Mr Baker. So as with a sign that it could where be... Where the site of probably this blunt injury was, there's obviously been either globe rupture or some penetrating trauma, correctopia with the arras drawn up to the previous corneoscleral wound, and a bit of a lens opacity there. And it signs as if from Mr Strickland's history that there was some retinal hemorrhage, some retinal damage. Hmm. Uh, we don't have any ultrasound or previous imaging. Of Thank, Thank you very you. much for giving us more of your time uh, th this afternoon. No problem. Um, we've got uh, an audience of uh, multiple trainees from around the UK listening and, and, and watching today. And uh, earlier on today, I had a look at your extensive past ocular history on our Monday soft record. Yeah. If we go way back, when did you have your first episode of uveitis? No. Um, we just left it. Well, being I a would... trained physio, you know, the, 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 the physiotherapy seems to be the mainstay of ankylosing spondylitis, yeah. so a lot of it, if it's well controlled. Yeah, and we just left it that I would go back mm. if I needed to, so okay. hopefully. Would you mind not if we had a look at your eyes on the, the, the slit lamp? So I'm got all this amazing gadgetry for people can see what, what, <laughs> what I'm seeing. Um, so I'm just going to narrow the beam down a little bit here, and hopefully it's just gone again. Some of you can see it, some of you Yeah. See that the implant, the inferior edge of the haptic, and this has been like this pretty much since the original operation, mm -hmm. uh, it's not in the capsular bag, it's displaced in front of the iris. And there are, if I just put it on slightly higher magnification, hopefully you can see those giant cell deposits on the posterior surface of the implant. Implant. Yeah. Notes of your recent visits to the eye yeah. clinic. Um, can you tell me what things have you noticed about your right eye blade that made you seek a medical opinion? In honesty, it was I broke my glasses mm -hmm. and I really struggled with because I had to tape them up because without them I really mm -hmm. could, I, I knew this side was do yep. dodgy. And if I hadn't done that, I don't know if I would have gone and got any attention. Right. Um, I went to the opticians, mm -hmm. and it wasn't until this side's covered, and I'm looking a bit closer there just yeah. to see that. Right there, yeah. I can really clearly see yeah, that with the right side. Just what I've been doing. So it was reading 17 and 12. In the clinic earlier. Right, I can do it again. Of axial proptosis. Okay. Right. So. Yeah, you can appreciate a big contrast. Right, a healthy disc. So 
on one side a tropic featureless disc and then that completely. Undilated people as well. Yeah. It's very healthy. Good. Thank you very much. That's really <laughs> helpful to sit back today. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the problems obviously stem from back in 2014 when you presented to us with a, a retinal detachment yeah. in your right eye. Um, tell us a, a bit about, about that. What did you notice at the time? Well, funnily enough, it was the day of my daughter's wedding. Now, beyond the technical setup, there was a lot more work that went on behind the scenes. You know, Rebecca was running around, making sure the patients were booked in. We had lots of help from our secretaries, receptionists and nurses who emailed me while I was sitting here, acting as almost like a producer, switching the video feeds, changing the contrast and exposure for different types of examination of the eye with a slit lamp. Uh, and Rebecca went and got the patients, took them to the room next door, consented them and made sure the timings were as efficient as possible. You know, to the viewer, it made it look like everything was extremely slick and streamlined but if you're planning on hosting your own event make sure you do think of the logistics behind this and of course Rebecca also made sure that the patients had their gifts we bought them chocolates afterwards to thank them for their time afterwards I hope you found this video really useful and we'd be really keen to help you support you set up your own virtual set lamp grand round so if you do have any questions technical difficulties or want to get involved don't hesitate to leave a comment or get in touch